Here we go. So good morning, uh, good afternoon, everyone, uh, wherever you are based. Uh, my name is Ignacio del Castillo. Um, hopefully some of you uh, will know me already. Um, I'm one of the customer success managers at CleanChain. Um, this is the second Coffee and Learn session uh, that, we, that we are running. And um, this, the intention is, is for these sessions to replace the uh, longer customer panel calls that we used to have. Uh, last week we had the wastewater session um, and, and we believe that this is the right format. Um, shorter sessions, but a bit more, hopefully a bit more interactive and, and um, it would allow us also to focus on, on specific topics uh, a lot more. Uh, traditional housekeeping, uh, I've unmuted everyone. So if you want to speak, uh, you wanna ask a question, you just need to unmute yourselves. Uh, and also, if you want to um, ask any questions on the uh, chat box, uh, we will keep an eye on that as well, okay? Uh, also, I'm gonna mention this at the end as well, but there will be a brief questionnaire, just three questions that will pop up on your screen when I close the webinar. So it will be really helpful if you could uh, provide us some feedback uh, after, after the session, okay? So in today's panel, uh, we have a Zillard, Zillard from Levi um, and Chris Haddock from the Clean Chain team. Um, the plan uh, is for Chris to start with a short introduction to screen chemistry um, and then a, a product demo on the functionality uh, in Clean Chain. And then we will move to um, a session between uh, Zillard and, and me uh, where I will be asking Zillard a few questions and hopefully Zillard will be able to share um, some of their experience with uh, the implementation of screen chemistry uh, across their supply chain, challenges, and, and so on. So, Chris, uh, I will hand it to you now, um, and Sila and I will come back later. Thank you. Chris, over to you now. All righty. Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Chris Haddock, product manager at Clean Chain, and we'll start with a very, um, I should be sharing full screen. Um, starting here with what is screen chemistry, just a very quick overview. There are currently two providers who do the actual screening. So a chemical that is screened answers the question, according to the safe data sheet, their manufacturing process, is this chemical safe? And you'll see on the talk services, site they have talk service one of the providers who provide this the other is cyvera lens or cyvera um, they have a very long methodology of how they go through the screening and assessment and also that it complies with ZZ, zdhc mrsl um, levels one and one two and three depending on how it how it is scored and you'll see that the chemicals come in nice uh, red, yellow, green. So depending on the safety of the chemical, um, it gets scored and then it is, is assigned a score for that. So Talk Services and Cybera are two certifying bodies for chemicals that can go out and have, um, not just in the apparel industry and a lot of other industries, they're working with two screen chemicals to get uh, chemicals that are toxic out of the supply chain. And so what we do at Clean Chain is we take the certifications and we link them to the chemicals that are in our product library. So we have our chemical product library, which is what we're looking at right now. And if the product is already in the library, this is our demo site. So these are um, not real chemicals. We'll list them, we'll show that red, yellow, green, and also the scoring. So the scoring is between zero and 50, and depending on the score they get, they become a, a red, yellow, green chemical. And again, you can have two certificates. So you could have the Cyvera certificate or Talk Services certificate, their score, the result, this is a 50, so it's preferred. And then the resulting ZDHC certificate, which is provided by ZDHC. So, um, just because it have, it's possible to have a scored chemical, but not have the ZHC if, if the 
if the manufacturer hasn't registered also with CDHC. So we take the scores, the chemicals, and a supplier would come into Clean Chain. This is a Clean Chain inventory page. So we have all of the list of a Miro Mills and their different inventories listed out. And then if we click into an individual inventory, we'll see all of the chemicals they have on that inventory. You can come in, add rows. When we're, we're looking at inventories, we also include the score within the search criteria. You can come down and, and look for um, some of the products that are scored. Add that chemical to your inventory. Obviously, give it a wait. Minutes. Save and complete. And we have our inventory. If there's a link, the in check report gets generated at that point. And everything is set up from the inventory side. From a brand side, we look over at the, the brand. You can come to your chemical dashboard. And we can see both a supplier conformance. So over on the side here of all of the chemicals across my entire supply chain, you can see that this mill has a supplier score, chemistry score of 41, which is very good. And these others are not having that same score. And how we rate a supplier as we look at all of their inventory, all of the weight of their products, and then um, do basically a, a calculation and weight it by the amount of product that they have that's scored within their inventory. Um, most of these are very, very low scores. It's very hard to get a, a high score within the screen chemistry um, just because of the number of chemicals. Um, but we do have this uh, listed. And then we also have product conformance. We can come in and we can look at whatever certification standards. So if we pull off a couple of these standards just to filter out to exactly the, the items we're looking at today. And you can see there's 36 products, 16 of them have um, a scored chemical, the remainder do not. And then have some standards and weights of those products, the seven products, the nine products that are green or yellow and uh, the weights of that. Typically, if a product is scored red, they would not publish it. Um, they wouldn't put, so we don't really have very many red scored products within uh, Clean Chain. And from here, you can come export this all, comes out as just the, the straight data um, with both all of the products, the weight, and then if it has a score or not, if it's screened or scored. And you can pivot this and, and do whichever you'd like to do. Um, with your scored chemistry, so ranking your suppliers, your supply chain, and encouraging them to, to have more scored chemicals. So that's a really quick overview of both um, the certificates coming from Tox Services and Cybera. They provide those certificates into our product library. Our product library um, is then used to create an inventory. And then we go to product conformance from a brand's perspective of rolling that up and summing that up and generating that out. So that's the, the snapshot of scored chemistry within Clean Chain. Back over to you, Ignacio. Let me move on to the next set of slides so we can recap. Um, share. Okay, I think we're, are you, can you see my screen now again, the slides? Chris? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Okay, so recapping, uh, Chris, I don't know if you wanna continue uh, kind of recapping what you've just gone through. Um, yes, so we have on the, on the screen, you see what is squared chemistry. Squared chemistry um, is a way to positively review the chemical and confirm that it is safe according to the manufacturing process. So this is a little bit different than, than saying, are any of the chemicals on a, the restricted substance list? It is a way of, of verifying that, yep, 
according to this manufacturing process and a review of the SDS, it's a good chemical. Um, it also relates to ZDHC has talked about plans of pulling in um, the toxicology of the chemical and using the screen chemistry methodology to add that into their next versions of um, their certification. So they haven't published anything yet, but there should be a mapping between the score of 50, zero to 50 within the, the scored chemistry, um, the screen chemistry that comes out with and what is um, how it's rated in ZDHC. Um, and to encourage facilities to have more scored chemicals, um, I think Zillard is going to talk about how he, he has a program um, and uses reporting to provide that. Yeah, I think I think we'll ask Sila to, to share a bit more around that. Um, in terms of um, the, the second point here, uh, would you be able to tell us a bit more about the difference between just just for everyone to be clear, the difference between screen chemistry versus a certified uh, chemical, Chris, please. So a screen chemical can be a certified chemical, um, just like uh, Inditex the list or Blue Sign or any of the other certifying bodies. The scored chemistry is another body that is certified and recognized by ZDHC to get a ZDHC um, certificate and then level. The main difference between looking at a scored chemical versus something that doesn't have a, a restricted substance list is a chemical, when you go against the restricted substance list, it only verifies that those 180, 200 chemicals are not within the product. So if there's another product that's outside of it, if, if say dioxins aren't listed on this, the, the restricted substance list, it won't appear uh, when you compare it against the 180 chemicals. So the scored chemistry takes a different approach and they say, we're not gonna look for specific chemicals. What we're gonna do is we're gonna look at the process, the chemistry that's within it and say, is that safe or not safe according to the processes and the, the methodology that's made um, and the chemicals that are in it and classifications of chemicals in it. But it, it tries to take instead of just looking at individual chemicals and comparing it to that, it looks more holistically to try to get a safe certification. Okay. Also, and this is a, a question that just popped up, but um, you did mention about um, um, suppliers approaching uh, for, for the chemicals to be screened. How, how can a supplier get a chemical screened, Chris? Um, frequently, and Zillow probably has more on this, um, it, they would need to go to reach out to the manufacturer or reach out to Talk Services and Cybera. So Talk Services and Cybera already have relationships with a large number of providers. And so they can check and see if there's an existing chemical, either within Clean Chain and search through the chemical list in Clean Chain to find a substitute. If they're using something that's similar, a dye, and they want to have a dye that's certified, they can switch it. Or they can reach out to Cybera or Talk Services see if they already have a relationship with that formulator and say, you know, I'm using this, and can you get this certified? Um, the other is giving that supplier, the formulator's contact information to talk services in Cybera, and they would reach out and, and try to get them to, to get it certified. Okay. And I suppose the next question on that is, what happens afterwards? Who gets to upload those uh, screen chemicals to Clean Chain? Is that something we do in the background? We have a relationship with both Talk Services and Cybera, and on um, the periodicity, depending on how many chemicals they've screened, they give us new lists, or our lists are constantly being updated, um, and new scores come in, and so we're, we're updating those lists. We have APIs in order to facilitate um, those lists getting published and, and maintained. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Um, I've, yeah, I've asked Diana if there are any, any more questions coming through, please do let me know. But uh, I guess we can move forward. Uh, there's another, um, just sort of um, summarizing what, what we've just covered, uh, some of the benefits of uh, screen chemistry. Um, Chris, uh, can you, um, yeah, can you uh, go through this as well, please? And then I'll, I'll take over and, and move on with um, CLED, sorry. Sure. Um, I've sort of 
talked a little bit about the first item, and I think Zillard will talk uh, more about it. Um, but with screen chemistry, again, it's it's um, the benefit is if we have and one of the examples we have is if you had a cup of tea and you asked a chemist, or if you went through the restricted substance list and, and you compared it against the restricted substance list, the chemist would say it doesn't have any of the 180 chemicals that are listed on the restricted substance list. And you would say, well, does it have cholera in it? And the chemist would say, well, would you like me to test for cholera? And we would say, well, that's not very, okay, now test for cholera. And then they would say, does it have some other disease within it or some other chemical within it? And the chemist would say, well, I'll test for that. The difference between that and screen chemistry is a chemist would say, if you use pure water and you filtered it in the right way and you boiled it in the right way and you added this tea bag to it, then it is safe. And so it's it's a difference of looking for a problem versus looking at a methodology that provides you with a safe chemical. So that's the very um, big difference between screen chemicals and just going against an MRSL list. Um, the scores, again, are assigned by Talk Services and Cybera. They're the two bodies that, out there that are doing it. They both provide, use the same scoring methodology and rating, so um, either a score of 30 coming out of Tox Services or a score of 30 coming out of Cybera will be the same. Um, and the scoring by rank, the last question on how to rank facilities according to uh, their volume, we've done it in one way, which is we took all of the quantity of chemicals they have on site and what percentage of those are scored and we, and we rated the, the supplier on that. Um, but there's multiple ways of, of doing that ranking. Uh, we're working with Zillow Don coming up with, with a way that works for Levi on his ranking. Thank you, Chris. Thank you so much. Um, thank you for the demo as well. Um, so moving on, if there are any more questions for Chris, um, happy for you uh, to um, either, again, unmute yourself or put your questions in the chat box. Um, Vicky is posting that, um, yeah, if you need to get in touch with us, you can uh, arrange a, a custom uh, demo um, through the link on the chat box. So moving on, um, as I mentioned earlier, we have uh, Sealert um, from, from Levi's with us today. Uh, Levi is one of our main clients um, using screen chemistry uh, scoring at the moment, and Sealert has agreed to um, share some of their insights and, and learnings with regards to the implementation of uh, their uh, screen chemistry program uh, across their supply chain. So, Sillard, um, would you like to please give us a, a quick introduction uh, and uh, about yourself, your role, and share some of uh, your experience with, with, with us, please? Yes, thanks, Ignacio. Um, hi, everyone. Good morning, good afternoon. Um, Yes, um, I've been working for Levi's screen chemistry program since uh, since the beginning, practically since 2011. Um, as a manager for chemical programs um, and roadmap for Levi Shows and Company. Um, the beginning was when Greenpeace uh, launched a campaign against apparel uh, industry and um, tested wastewater, detected some hazardous substances in the wastewater and questioned the brands about those pollutions. And um, Greenpeace also ex expressed that their preferred way would be um, if brands could go to hazard assessment. And um, we looked around the market at that time and we found only risk-based assessment. So um, Chris partially talked about it. Um, risk-based means that factory purchases a chemical and gets a technical data sheet, a safety data sheet, which describes how to use it safe, um, which is great, but we also kind of uh, accepted the Greenpeace point of view and tried to figure out if we could find um, some 
chemicals which could come together with a with a hazard score saying that hey if you use this you are safe um, by a certain extent of course <clears throat> some remaining hazard is always there so we cannot avoid uh, but we cannot miss the safety data sheet or any other documents for the remaining hazard but our question was um, how can we how can we find uh, and use the 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 best most sustainable chemical in the in the same functional group more practically the question was if if we have a factory anywhere in the world in a in a city um, and there are four chemical suppliers capable to provide uh, for example a softener um, all of them cost the same shipment date is the same and all of them works well on our fabric how can we decide which one is the, the most sustainable in other words without cost impact how can we how can we select the best practically today um, or in that days those days the the selection criteria for chemicals was just does it work what's the price and what is the shipment date can we use it for our production but most of the cases we are in a very comfortable situation um, factories have access to these chemicals relatively price comparable and and um, most of these chemicals work well on our fabrics and garments finishing. So it, it absolutely made sense to try to work out the screen chemistry program. And as Chris mentioned, we, we found partners for it, uh, toxicological organizations, namely Tox Services and Cyvera. And um, we worked out together the program and then we handed it over to the, to the entire industry. So this is not a Levi program anymore. Uh, it's recognized by ZDIC, um, Cyber Talk Services are happy to work for any brand. Uh, brand doesn't need to be a ZDIC member. So it's actually screen chemistry can be used for other industries, uh, um, including some mobile phone manufacturers are using it. I know um, other um, Consumer goods are also manufacturing factor, uh, brands are using it. Um, there's no limitation practically. If it's a chemical, a toxicologist is able to screen it um, for 18. They are considering 18 um, toxicological endpoints, eyes, skin, you know, inhalation. Um, there's, a, there's a long list. Um, we, we wanted something which is very easy to understand. One number is a self-explanatory together with the red, yellow, green rating. It's easy to understand in the factory. We don't want to share under, I don't know, 50 pages of toxicological study together with every single uh, chemical. We found that even a safety data sheet um, information information package is uh, often too much for a for a smaller factory staff they they just don't understand the different sections they so um what we like in a screen chemistry and that was the original purpose together with the toxicologist something which brings very very valuable information in an easy to understand way to the factories that's uh, that's somehow the I think the the best introduction how we started and why we developed it and why it is today um, in King chain. And uh, as, as as it was mentioned before, maybe a, a question to you though: How did you manage to implement this across your your supply chain? And maybe if you want to tell us about this is actually one of the next questions on the on the preset questions. But how, what challenges did you would you say you faced uh, in terms of implementing uh, the program? Yeah, the <clears throat> the good news is that our factories, the manufacturing factories, are in a very comfortable situation because 
they need to do only two tasks. One is forward the screening requirement. This can be just a simple email. Um, Talk Services and Cyber are very happy to help to the factories uh, to phrase um, a letter which the factory, the, the garment or fabric manufacturing factory or mill uh, can send, can forward practically to the chemical manufacturer and request the screening. So practically it's a triangle interlink the, the, certifi the certification body, Talk Services Cyvera with the chemical manufacturers through the through the chemical manufacturing factory. And in an optimal case, the chemical manufacturer listens to this request and contacts Cyvera or Talk Services, requests a quotation and decides one of them, which one is better and requests or pays for the, for the screening. And then as Chris ex explained, once the, the result is issued by Talk Services Cyvera, the chemical company uploads it to the to clean chain and makes it available for the factory. And then comes the second task for the factory, select it from the, from the clean chain. It becomes visible. Um, the, the screen chemistry certificate is, is accessible through clean chain and the score can, can be seen, red, yellow, or green. Um, simply, this is the process. Um, what is the biggest challenge is actually uh, the resistance of the chemical company. If the chemical company is not open to screen, then, then, um, then it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a difficult situation. Um, there are two ways to solve such a situation. We as a brand are happy to go back together with a with a garment finishing laundry or fabric mill together to the chemical manufacturer and try to convince. If it doesn't work, then the factory has no other choice than select a similar chemical with screen chemistry certificate. Um, which is um, sometimes challenging because um, we couldn't screen all the chemicals on the market, right? So it's probably back to my original examples. There are four, four softener suppliers in a specific city. One of them has today's screen chemistry certificate, um, but the factory is using another softener contacts that second softener manufacturer who refuses the screening, then the factory has a choice to select another one with the certificate, but that probably doesn't work in that specific garment or, or fabric. I'm very honest, it's, it's mm, substitution doesn't always uh, the perfect solution. So in those cases, um, we understand that the factory is not able to improve in short period of time, but let's not forget there are still another two softener manufacturers in that specific city. So probably the factory should spend some more time and contact those ones too and request. And again, we as a brand, we, we are happy to help um, for the factories to convince chemical manufacturers to screen. Okay. Okay, and how do you engage with them? Um, is it do you make it a requirement for them to? Uh, I'm just thinking how you keep track of those suppliers. Is it uh, do you do it through through Clean Chain mostly? Is that the only platform where you're keeping track of this information? Yeah, we are using only Clean Chain for everything. So Clean Chain is capable to uh, present us uh, a monthly um, in check report. Um, which is a which is a ZDIC terminology and 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 capable to to issue the ZDIC um, uh, in check report where we can see actually was presented uh, by Chris uh, a couple of minutes ago that how many chemicals have certificates and how many of those certificates are actually screen chemistry certificates. What as a brand we 
demand from our factories is that they need to continuously try to use more and more. And um, that's, that's our guideline, that's our requirement. If this month, 32 chemicals are in inventory in our factory, 16 has certificates and eight of them are screen chemistry certificates. We request a factory that next month or two months from now, we would like to see nine chemicals with a screen chemistry certificates. We, we request continuous improvement. And why is that is uh, very simple. It's not only because of ZDAC conformance, but if you think, and that's the real difference here, is that collecting certificates is really just an administrative exercise. I'm always saying I can buy a shelf and collect the, all the certificates in our supply chain for all chemicals, all factories. But we know that the, the environment, the legal environment is changing around us. Like European Union just issued the Green Deal um, and lots of legislations we expect in the following years. We are hearing that if a brand is not able to prove traceable chemical information, then that product or that material cannot be reused and recycled. We don't know today, we are just in discussions, but anyhow, it makes sense. If you don't know, then, then don't do it. So um, our long-term goal is to really try to collect uh, traceability information for all of our materials. And currently this is the only certification program on the market where we can collect today, store it, file it, archive it, and probably pull it back five, six years from now and prove it to the legal authorities that, hey, we know what we used five, six years ago when close to the end life cycle of uh, denim jeans, it's easy to use even for 10 years, right? So, um, and that's, that's the whole philosophy behind it. Um, and and we, we engage with clean chain because clean chain tool is actually capable to provide us um, the tracking today, um, very easy to use for our factories. Screen chemistry is easy to understand, red, yellow, green plus the score. And we know that the toxicological organizations, they have all the information down to 100 ppm level. They know exactly all ingredients of a chemical, which we don't need today, but it's very comfortable to, to understand that I have on my shelf a very special certificate which has this information. The other certificates are risk-based certificates. Those are also good today, fantastic. ZDAC is rating them level one, two, three. Um, we are also uh, accepting those, but no question our preference is the screen chemistry certificate because, because of the hazard assessment content and because it's really usable later on for traceability calculations and yeah. Yeah. Okay, that makes sense. Thank you. Um, and also, I think we've we've pretty much covered everything here, except for the last question on this on this list. Um, if you were in an ideal world, uh, any additional features or functionalities that you would like to see in Clean Chain uh, to to help you achieve these goals? See that. Yeah, yeah, probably back to my original four softener factories in a, in a specific city. I think it would be fantastic if a supplier factory could search in the clean chain, just type in, hey, I'm based in the here and I need a softener, which one is the a pop-up window? Is These are four available and this is the most sustainable. Let, let's assume that all the four softeners will listen to us and we'll we we'll screen uh, the, the softeners and then again, all costs the same, shipment date is the same, works well on my fabric. But if, if we as a brand, our innovation development team, plus 
the manufacturing factories and mills would be able to search by location, by availability, by sustainability score, that would be a great help. And everybody would be able to develop recipes in a real sustainability focused way. Okay, we've got some homework there then, <laughs> Chris. Um, I have unmuted uh, everyone on the call. Also, if people have any questions, please feel free to uh, pop them on the on the chat. Um, do we have any questions coming through? Let me see. I'm looking at the everyone. Uh, not at the moment. Um, what else? Let me have a look at my notes. Um, so do you mind if... Yeah, Chris, sorry. I was going to ask you if you had any comments, actually. That was no. my next point. <laughs> no problem. Do you mind if I share a little bit about um, the custom report you're using for tracking on this Zillard and show an anonymized uh, information from that? Say that that's a question for you. Say, say it again, please. Do you mind if I show some of the custom report that we're building? No, no, no. Feel free. Yeah. Please. Yeah. Yeah, that's another thing that I could have shared with you guys. And Chris, uh, feel free to take over. But we've been working, Chris, Sila, and I have been working on a, a monthly custom report for, for Sila. So Chris, feel free to share. I think uh, you've mentioned that it will be anonymized. So we have a couple of minutes left. So yeah, I'm gonna... so um, Zilla came to us and, and um, I'm going to stop sharing and, and said that you know, talked about the program, talked about he's using the program. Um, and so as you heard, Zillard is, you know, exclusively uses clean chain. Um, so fantastic um, client for us. And so we wanted to support his work with a little bit of extra um, methodology. So when you come into clean chain, um, Zillard provided us with a spreadsheet. It's not this exact spreadsheet with some summary information and all of these categories across the top. So we see that there's a screen chemistry score, if there's stagnation, meaning they haven't moved from uh, the previous month. So Ziller talked about, I want to see improvement each month of the sites. Um, so we calculate from the previous month to this month on the stagnation of it, their overall uh, screen chemical score that they're receiving. But we combine this also with other information, um, these settings are a little hard to see here, but we, the score, are they submitting their inventory? That gets a score. Are they part of the um, academy for ZDHC Academy? Do they have performance communication? Are they in gateway? Are those all their wastewater fees paid? So we can take all of this information and pull it each month um, from both uh, ZDHC as, as Levi's a member of ZDHC, along with the clean chain information, combine it to one site, do a little bit of summary, a little bit of searching. Um, and this is the process of prototyping this dashboard. So we just came out with this. We're going to meet with some of the people internally within, within Levi to see if they're getting the information out of it. And then our next step will be to take this dashboard and go from this sort of kind of ugly looking dashboard and turn it into something that looks more like a standard clean chain dashboard. But this is our draft. This is our process of you know, we start with this an Excel file, build up the dashboard, then get everybody on board, getting the information. It's going to be part of their business bar system, and then turn it over and build that into, into clean chain um, regularly. So this is part of Zillard's methodology for reviewing that we have, he has continuous improvement on site and can track that on a monthly basis. Thank you for, thank you for letting me share that, Zillard. Thank you very much, Chris. Um, let me go back. Um, yeah, that's that's it from us. And, and thank you for, for taking those last couple of minutes, Chris, uh, to share what we've been uh, doing with, uh, with Levi. Ignacio, um, there's, one, there's one question. Okay. Do you want yes. to put it up? Let me. Uh, 
I'm looking at the panel at the chat box and I don't see it. Uh, do you want to read it? In the Q&A? It is, um, thank you, Zillard. The value in the program like this is realized with scale. Um, in other words, if all chemicals are scored. So how do you, how does the industry bypass the, the hurdle? And the hurdle, hurd, I suppose the primary hurdle that you've highlighted here at the moment is the, the chemical manufacturer manufacturers are resistant to testing so in your opinion how could the industry yeah. bypass this yeah i think it's a it's a probably it's a very very good question um, um i think we don't need to bypass but uh, probably go for a common solution and that's why we are looking for partners within, but also out of ZDHC. Already lots of brands within ZDHC are interested and start the screening. And, um, but we are also looking for, I, I understand if a brand doesn't want to join ZDHC, no problem.